are here to talk about Welcome to Plathville. We are in season six. This is episode 10? Yeah. Okay, so we are a week late, just to remind you all. Yeah. Because of our filming schedule, Deal this one's it. gonna be a little bit delayed, but we're going to we're going to see it through. Don't you worry yes. about it. Yes. So what is the title of this episode? I love you. I love you. Oh my god. Girl. Let's just start with it because I'm wounded after watching I that. mean 85% of this episode was Olivia and I her weird boyfriend. I had to sit there and watch Olivia. Oh my God. Constantly talk about how in love she was with this absolute Dork. dud <laughs> of a dweeb. I know. Just, I don't get it. Ugh. I don't want to skip ahead. Nope. I'm just saying I don't get it. And I don't want to be too cruel because I'm going to be, you know, I, I'm, I'm older. Maybe I don't get, maybe I'm checked out of, of why people date other people, but I just, I just couldn't take it with Olivia. I mean, she's so hypocritical. Okay. Anyway, we're going to, we're going to stop. Yeah. We'll go in order. Take it away. Well, the episode fucking starts with them. Yeah. It starts in why? Sedona. It's welcome to Plathville. It's not welcome to Megsville. It's not welcome to Oliviaville. It's not welcome to Dogwalkerville. I mean, really though? Like, why do we have to get into this? And like, like I said, the majority of the episode was in Sedona with Olivia and her new boyfriend. So we get to meet him. His name is Brendan. Of course. He's a dog walker. Oh she my met God. Him. <laughs> she met I don't want to be classist because how I'm not classist. I'm not. But I sorry. No, she met him on a, a photography trip in DC, which it makes me wonder when that me too. Photography trip Because remember, was. Michael went up on Watch What Happens Live mm -hmm. with Andy Cohen, and mm -hmm. Andy Cohen brought up cheating and whether yeah. Ethan cheated because at the time Ethan was seen line dancing somewhere in Minnesota, and Micah actually said on Watch What Happens Live, um, if anybody did, it wasn't Ethan, it was yes. Olivia. And so maybe he was referring to this. Um, yeah, I think she's pulling a Kim Plath. Mm -hmm. I think she immediately got with this guy the second she moved out of Ethan's apartment. It's like looking in a mirror. It, seriously. Remember it Olivia really Grace is. said that to Olivia? Because Olivia says her and Brendan have been dating for a few months. And in this fucking episode, they are already saying I love you to each other. He's saying he wants to spend the rest of his life with her. Wants to grow old with no one but her. But you know, you noticed he says all this stuff. She's not echoing that. She's just saying, I'm having fun. Oh, she's also saying, I love you. I love she's, you. I love you, but love she's you not so saying, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. No, she's not using that language, but she's definitely signaling that she wants to be with him. She's also saying things like she's ready to settle down. And she thought it was about like what home was, was a place, but it's actually a person mm -hmm. implying that he is her home. She's so dumb. And this is why I'm telling you guys, when you're up on Instagram and looking at all these motivational influencers influencers yep. and how they have their life together and they use all of this therapized speak pretending that they have their shit together they don't no they're olivia plath yep. who went from one situation a seven year long-term relationship with religious trauma with a repressed person right into another relationship with a dog walker yep a dog walker who doesn't open his eyes fully nope <laughs> he doesn't open his eyes no. fully when he looks at her and has hickeys on his neck, which is fine. I get it. Passion, sex. Love. But like, you're displaying your hickeys so gross. It's so gross, dude. You're not healed, Olivia. No. You're not healed. You needed to take like two to five years yep. with continued therapy and travel and exploration of self and your own interests and what motivates you and what inspires you. You needed to take the time. But no, because you're unhealed, mm -hmm. you jumped from Ethan to this dork. And because you maybe had your first orgasm ever with a man, with this guy, unfortunate for you, but <laughs> whatever, because you had your first orgasm ever with him, you are so sprung and so in love with this guy. And a sex goddess too. I now mean, she's an authority on that as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, now she's an authority on sex too. Because he calls her that. I right. mean, because she's objectively beautiful. It's probably He's what it is. He's the luckiest man in the world. Uh, seriously. Notice he says something like, I had the 
pleasure of her bringing me to the Bahamas yes. on one of her jobs as a photographer. Broke. That's because she's paying. Yep. I don't think you paid to fly to Sedona to meet up no. with Olivia. TLC paid for that. Mm-hmm. TLC is paying for this Airbnb. 100%. Because you're broke. And I'm sorry, everybody needs a dog walker, I guess, which is fine, but you're 28 years old. Yeah. Maybe you're an entrepreneur. Maybe you walk 1,000 <sighs> dogs. Maybe you ass. have a staff of 30 people who walk dogs. No. Or... Maybe you're looking for somebody to glom onto, somebody who's on television, and somebody who is a literal goddess. I mean, who is so out of your league, it's crazy to even have to articulate. You know, he knows that. Oh, so he's just like, I'm along for the ride, dude. Well, in my pink shirt and my purple pants, <laughs> saying I love you every five fucking seconds. I think he's just saying all this shit because he wants to fuck and he wants the fame. That's it but like the second that they're with each other for like an extended period of time where they're like living together and you have to deal with olivia being manipulative and fucking bossy and controlling and needing your attention all the time so she's exhausting all the time like there's going to be conflict she even says in this episode they've already had tiffs and arguments Mm -hmm. but she said the difference is because he wants to actually work on things with me I'm sorry, but Ethan wanted to fucking work on mm-hmm. things with you. Yep. You just weren't in love with him. And that's fine. They got tattoos. They got matching tattoos, They got turtle bitch. tattoos, which are the most basic dumb tattoos you can get. I'm from Hawaii. Like, turtle tattoos. But they're matching. And I'm like, so now you have two sets of matching tattoos from two different men. Is this your MO? But she's only been with him for four months and she's getting matching tattoos. I realized my daughter got a tattoo for you in a month. But you guys have been married for eight years. Exactly like no yeah so she's not this paragon of awareness right and awakening she's not on this magical therapized journey she's just as broken as everybody else and frankly she's showing her ass on television oh yeah she even went up on her own ig and said look i get it i am cringing watching this episode because of the amount of times i've said i love you i realize it's ridiculous and i'm embarrassed you should be well, but even then she doubled down and was like, but this is just me being happy and in love and organic. And like, this is just my true authentic self. And so like, I'm just being authentic to my journey. And then all of her stupid fans are like, yes, queen, it's amazing. We love it. We love it for you. Blah, 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 blah. I, I give it like a year and a half. Uh, if they that... live together. Well, this is filmed like last year. So, I mean, I feel like they're going to move in with each other. We're probably going to see that next Why? fucking season. We're not covering it. We're not. I'm not doing it. it. I don't care about Olivia I'm not Platt. Doing it. And I keep leaving messages on the TLC Instagram <laughs> telling them to stop this horse shit or I'm not going to. How many podcasts actually cover this? I don't know. I can think of maybe two others besides us I mean, that really. actually cover Welcome to Plathville. But you're going to lose us. And yeah. we've actually covered every single episode every that ever broadcast. One. We were into it. But if this is the way you're going to go, platforming fucking Olivia and this dork. Yeah. Uh, for that matter, Micah and his dork. I like mean, all of these random people. <laughs> yeah. Next week, Ethan and his new girl dork. Right. I don't care about these people. Well, I kind of care about Ethan dating. I like to see that. And I would like to see Barry with a random dork. Okay, but I don't want to see but, like, Olivia. To the exclusion of like actually delving into the family dynamics. Right. I mean, no, it's, I, I don't right. care about your speed dating. I don't care about your bathtub in Sedona. Oh my God. And all of these manufactured Ugh. romantic moments. You look stupid. They Olivia, look dumb. it's really dumb looking. It's so bad. And then you're also going to talk about broccoli farts. Like, why do we have that fucking scene where he's talking about farting? Like, like it's so cute. It's like, I wonder who gross. First of all, let me just tell you, I've had many marriages, yeah. many relationships. I have been adored around the world by many men. <laughs> and that's not an understatement. No, yeah. Okay, and I've been married to this guy for a long time. Women, don't fart in front of your man. No. I'm sorry. Do you fart in front of your wife? If it's an accident, but I never do it on purpose. <laughs> Ever. I n- <laughs> never would ever do something like that i mean whether i was with a woman or a man i just feel like it takes all of the romance out of a relationship my husband talks about his wife and how she will what is it called uh when you dutch oven oh she will dutch oven my brother and i'm like how do you guys still have sex your husband my brother sorry i'm about to visit him and i always do that i i my brother my brother's wife will dutch oven him so fart and then put the blankets over his head and i'm like how do you still have sex after that listen even one month later how is how can you ever be sexually attracted to somebody i grew up with parents that did that on the reg like my mom would burp and fart and do whatever and like we grew up in a household like that like 
blatantly. No. Like just sitting there on the couch. No. And sitting on the couch just belching. No. I'm serious. Dead ass. And my dad, when my mom and my dad were married, he hated that. Yeah. He thought it was so gross. It's and unsexy and unromantic. And you guys can think, well, we're, we're so close. It doesn't matter. It matters. It actually, I think it matters. Yeah. It matters. I get embarrassed if it happens on accident. Me and too. I'm like, don't look at me. I don't even let my husband hear me poop. I know my daughter is the same way. She's a shy oh, pooper. Oh, yeah, 100%. She's a shy pooper yeah. like I am, like her mother. <laughs> but like I will run water, which is so bad for the environment. She does that too. Or I'll run the shower so that there's no chance at all that you will hear any sound yeah. or fury <laughs> from me in the bathroom. Like I can't yeah. take it. So the fact that it's four months in and this absolute loser... This lahooser is farting in front of the queen goddess Olivia, Seriously, who is like no. the most gorgeous woman in the world. I'm like, ever been you're with. so comfortable. You are so comfortable, sir. Mm -hmm. In your pink shirt and your dumb shoes and your dumb jacket and your stupid haircut and your listen. eyes that don't open oh and your hickey. God, I listen, him. and his manicured beard. But like, this is... This is the perfect type of guy for Olivia Plath, though, because he's going to be a pushover. Like she said, they already are having arguments and stuff. And when they're driving around Sedona, she's like getting annoyed with him with how he's holding the fucking phone for Google Maps and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is a preview mm -hmm. for your future of you guys mm -hmm. wanting to grill all together and smell each other's broccoli farts mm -hmm. and kiss your turtle tattoos And give each other hickeys. And give each other hickeys like... It ain't gonna last. It's not all rainbows and Skittles. Absolutely not. You know, Beer one thing Skittles. I noticed he said was that he loved Olivia because of how much she loved animals. Because, of, <sighs> again, he's a dog walker. And so yeah. he walks dogs. He walks cats. He works with animals, which I think is wonderful. I, too, love animals. Me, too. But I never saw an animal in Olivia's house. I never saw a cat. I never saw a dog. I never saw a chicken. I never saw a snake. I never saw one animal I do know that ethan grew up with animals mm -hmm. i know that he had a whole herd of cattle that he sold in order to buy that first house which she enjoyed and probably profited off of mm -hmm. but i never saw her with an animal but do you see how maybe she creates this persona in order to attract and or connect with people and then once she has them in the orbit she sets about trying to change them finding something about them that she doesn't like making herself superior in contrast and then judging them i mean i'm speculating a lot but i could just see it oh it's so manipulative she's not an animal lover no she doesn't give a shit she doesn't want to actually settle down because settling down makes her uncomfortable that's why she was frustrated with ethan like yeah Maybe she fell out of love with Ethan and that's, again, that's fine. But like, you don't want to stay somewhere mm -hmm. for very long. Because once you do, you have to deal with the shit inside of you. Yes. And she's been running away from all of that mm -hmm. for years now. So I don't buy it for a second. Even with her burning breakfast and trying to act all ditzy and like she can't fucking cook. When literally like two episodes ago, she's like, I am a really good cook. I just didn't want to cook for Ethan because he's a patriarchal piece of shit. Or maybe the truth is she actually can't cook oh. because she burned the eggs. <laughs> like <laughs> maybe. maybe she's pretending like she can cook, but she didn't cook for Ethan when in reality she actually can't cook. She sucked at it. Which is it. why she didn't cook. I don't know. Everything's a facade and ob an obfuscation with every single person on this cast. 1, not just her not just her i'm not just blaming her kim yeah. barry everybody yep just faking it except for maybe ethan i didn't need as much time as they had listen oh my god so much in the tub going to the mountain oh talking in the kitchen cuddling and to kissing. the camera outside with their hickeys in a bed farting like what <laughs> are we doing tlc like literally what are we doing they think we all love her because a lot of people do for some reason. But I'm like, get her her own show. So all the Olivia stands can be over there. Nobody's going to watch it. It will not succeed. I don't know. What does she have to offer? Nothing. Okay. God, I hate to hate on her because there are things that I like about her. And she's young and in love. And I was young once. Me too. And I was in love once. And yep. you, you do get sprung. And, and you're just like, oh my God. And you don't care. Yeah. But I don't need to see this on my television when you were just married to Ethan. And that's more interesting to me is your breakup, your divorce the conversation around that religion deconstructing that's more interesting to me than this mediocre white man well and it's so 
quick. Like this would have been fine like maybe next season or the season after. But like you literally just broke up with Ethan. You literally just signed the divorce papers and now we're saying I love you to a dog walker who farts? <laughs> like I don't why? I don't know, but if you want to like look at the psychology of it, like what is she looking for so desperately? She's mm -hmm. looking for something that she's willing to fall so hard for somebody who is untested and unchecked as this guy, like this this guy, like literally you could be with anybody you wanted like with a professional older man established knows how to take care of you like there's or a fucking lumberjack or a rancher. You could be with any man in the world. What are you looking for that this is the first thing you do after you get out of this relationship? And now you're trying to convince yourself mm. along with the rest of us that this is actually love. No, it's not. It's because you don't love yourself. Why don't you love yourself? Well, that goes back to childhood. Your what family. happened in your childhood? It's your family. Yep. What are you demonstrating and modeling back into your life right now that comes from that? That's more interesting to me than this fucking guy. Yep. It's probably profound loneliness because she's excommunicated from her family. Like as somebody who doesn't really have the best relationship with my own family, like it's a deep, lonely feeling that like not a lot of things can fill. Like even if you have your own family, even if you have your own relationship, like it's still there. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's that because she doesn't talk to anybody in her family besides fucking Lydia. Yeah. But like maybe acknowledge that. Like I understand you had to get out of your family because they were abusive and they were culty and terrible. And that's totally valid and fine. But like go to fucking therapy mm -hmm. and be okay being alone for a while before right. you jump in bed with some loser. Yeah. I mean, this is just another way to re-injure yourself. Yes. Like Ethan got tired of your bullshit and stopped catering to your attention-seeking behavior. Right. So then you divorced him, which I think you should have. That's fine. And I don't think you guys should be together. But then nope. you're just tripping into another relationship with a guy who is, of course, worshiping you as a sexual goddess because you are. You're like gorgeous. you're beautiful. Yep. But there's nothing else there. And you're tripping and you're falling into that with your whole heart. Yes. Like, And you're so naive. It's because very you don't risky. Know anything. Yeah. Like you don't know how men really are in the world because all you had was Ethan Platt. Yeah. He's not the best model for what men should be. Or humans. <laughs> <laughs> any emotional being yeah. any sentient emotional seriously being. It's and so not you're him. going after this guy who's just a dipshit oh god you could do so much better but hey i am so judgmental and i, I too, get it but but this is I just mean, i was I, it was it was not giving what i think she wanted to give right it was not the spectacular reveal yeah. of this stud muffin that i think she was <laughs> trying to do it was just like oh my god mwah, mwah. well and the, the whole i love you thing was like it was over just and so over and much. over who are you trying to convince with that i mean really like when you went when your daughter and I got together, like we were totally fucking cringy and like we were so in love with each other and so sprung like right from the get go. But I wasn't even saying I love you that mm -hmm. much and that early in, on in our relationship. And I was not doing that like as a performance for everybody That's else That's what it was. Me. I was just going to use the word performance. Yes. This was a performance. This was also her narcissistic way to try and get back with or not with, but to Ethan or get back yes. at Ethan because she wants to hurt him. She still wants to hurt him. Yes. And again, that's a mark of an unhealed person because when you're truly over something, you're indifferent. Yep. You're literally indifferent to that person. So you she's not over care. it. She wants to hurt him. Oh, 100% because she keeps talking about him too. Yep. It's ridiculous. And then we have the Plaths in Honey. Tampa, Florida for Mariah's music video, A Devil in Suit and Tie, which is not out. No. I was looking it up on YouTube. You would have think she would have released it simultaneously like, with the episode. You have this amazing album out, and I would love to watch this music video that um, Kim helped me you too. produce. I would like I mean, to review it on Patreon. Yes, but it's not out. That's weird. Yeah, it's very strange. So is this actually just produced for television? Why? Is there no video ever? Maybe Why they looked at the footage and they realized it was <laughs> turbo cringy and that they can't use it. Somebody <laughs> somewhere said, actually, it sounds terrible, looks terrible. Don't do it. Oh, my God. Maybe. I mean, because it was bad. Mariah's wearing a wedding dress for some reason. The whole family is in this music video. This guy, whoever he is, has turned her the fuck out. I mean. She's down bad. She's crashing over this guy. Yeah. And I'm like, who is he? Why are you in a wedding dress in the middle of a bar? Right. With your m mom. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ethan? Ethan's talking, talking about Kim. About Kim and her dresses and her mini, mini skirts. skirts. Oh, 
My and God. how he wishes he didn't have to see it. That was so good. And I agree. Like, I wish I didn't have to see it, too. Because Kim's walking around in this skin-tight blue mini-dress outfit with her big ass. God. There are people out there that share space with us and oxygen that don't actually see themselves accurately. Like, I'm sure she put on that dress and only saw it from one angle in the mirror. And then she's envisioning how she looks from a 360 vantage point And she thinks it's fire, baby. <laughs> she thinks she's on fire. She doesn't actually have a mirror for the backside where the skirt is riding up her entire ass. Uh -huh. And her panty lines are cutting into her midsection and her fupa. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Just like just dress for your body type. Disastrous. Just dress for well, your body not, type. She's not accepting her body type. She thinks she's hot. Kim Plath thinks she's hot. I think she wears this shit. Number one for Ken and his drunk ass, but also for Barry. For Barry. But for Barry's Barry. like, I'm not attracted to that no. shit. I want a slim lady. I want somebody that's into fitness. Yeah. <laughs> fitness C3PO dick all the way in. Exactly. Not Kim Plath. I'm not into that. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. You can flaunt that big ass, but I ain't into that shit. Well, when Barry was talking about how he has commiserated with and developed a relationship with Veronica, who is Micah's girlfriend, mm -hmm. because both of them have had to deal with a narcissist before, mm -hmm. my first thought was that he was talking about kim i think he was but veronica then speaks to camera and says that they were talking about olivia and then veronica very based made me love her a little bit goes on to opine about how yeah olivia's a narcissist the first time i met her i was really open to to having a relationship and she just dismissed me like a mean girl yeah oh my God. and then i had to remote view and psychically travel <sighs> to wherever olivia was on the night that this was shown and i had to wonder what she thought about that well veronica was saying it was like at a wedding or something and olivia just posted like 19 photos on instagram of her at a wedding at a plath wedding no less in minnesota she just now posted it and there's no photos of like well none of the ones that she posted of any of the plaths in there but it was for Cade and atiana plath and i don't know who they are i think they're cousins okay but i'm like why are you at the wedding yeah and she was looking fine she was looking fire she's she was, in this like the red dress yes you're not supposed to wear red to a wedding as a guest but i mean maybe it was fine maybe but maybe was, that's the narcissistic yeah. energy that Veronica's i do remember that out. she did look beautiful and that was probably the wedding where she met veronica that's what everybody's saying in the comments they're like is this the wedding and of course everybody's like calling out veronica and shitting on her being like well you barely met her and you're calling her a narcissist and you're just going off of what the plaths are telling you and it's like we can all see it on TV. Yeah, well, not everybody sees it, but no. we do. Yeah. People yes. are delusional, though. Yes. But I thought Barry was not referring to Olivia. I thought Barry was referring to Kim Plath. And yeah. Kim Plath is a narcissist. I thought so, too. So then they do the video, and we have to listen to Mariah Warble. <laughs> warble on. Yeah. And then her dance moves, and my sweet... Dear little Isaac, mm -hmm. looking like a snack. Oh my God, he's <laughs> you have so such a he's on so beautiful. Oh my God! But I mean, it was just you know so embarrassing. The Very. secondhand embarrassment, the craggling I have been doing. My insides are so muscular. Oh seriously! Oh my God! <laughs> Crack a walnut, honey. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> cringing so deeply. Oh my God! And then Kim directing Mariah's dance moves. I'm like, please stop. Waddle on over and take a shot. <laughs> we all know over. you want to waddle, waddle on over to the bar and waddle, take waddle. a fucking shot of whiskey. Seriously. And she yeah. does. She takes a few shots. Well, there. it's apple juice. Was it? Yeah. That's what Ethan said. But I mean, wink, wink, nod, yeah. nod. Who knows? Because Barry's kind of giving her the side eye. Yeah. A little bit. Well, because she's uh, drunk and got a DUI. Yeah. Well, and nobody's an talking about adulterer. that. Adulterer. Yep. And then after the music video, then Kim and the rest of the family is surprising Mariah with a party for her music debut or something. And I must nori. Like Veronica and Kim have like some weird like power trip thing. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nope. Kim's a controlling piece of shit. Also, Veronica, Veronica, you're a little weird. You're Just, a little, no offense. Giving Micah chore lists because uh -huh. he's an adult and can't think for himself, but whatever. And then we have the preview. Veronica and Micah go to a jewelry store 
and he asks her what her ring size and i'm just saying i called it you did a few episodes ago you did. i feel like they're setting it up for an end of season proposal i bet you he'd be so dumb even dumber that i think that he already is girl he'd be getting so engaged so dumb to they are that. so getting engaged um and then kim wants to do some big plath family concert just like the old days but we're not going to do gospel music which disappoints lydia <laughs> If I'm going to sing, I'm going to sing for Jesus. She's like so mad about it. I know. It's really funny. And then um, Brendan oh, does a tarot reading for Lydia Grace. Why? I forgot about that. Yes. Because I watched it yesterday. He actually pulled out tarot cards. Yeah, that he wow. bought in Sedona at some weird crystal shop yeah. for $5. And he's reading the fucking booklet that goes with it. Well, I think he's trying to impress Lydia Grace, who's traveled up from Phoenix or whatever, mm-hmm. to meet him and spend actual time with him. And this is his idea of doing that. So we'll see. But she calls it out. She calls Olivia and says that this is rash. Yep. This is dumb, and she's worried about Olivia, as she should be. Yes. And that's it. Well, that was so hard to watch. I know. I really, I mean, I normally watch our shows twice. Yeah, I couldn't watch this one. Because I've got an old brain. Yeah. So I got to go back, and I got to look, and I got to let it embed. And mm-hmm. I just, I could not go back to this. It was just torturous with the amount of time we spent in Sedona. I'm getting angry. I'm getting angry. Yeah. Angry at TLC for what they're doing to me with Sister Wives and with Plathville. They're ruining these shows. These really good shows that used to be like real mm-hmm. and genuine and now it's manufactured crap. Yes. And weird relationships with people we don't care about. Don't care about him. Do not care. Never will care. Never will care about Brandon. Well, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here? Bitch us. Well, if you love our podcast, you better be going to your favorite podcast platform and leaving us a glowing five star review. It costs you nothing. Just some just do it kindness out of your heart. I mean, we would really uh, appreciate it. We're trying to grow. If we're you trying could just to grow. do what you could do as a raccoon in the dumpster to help us, please. We'd appreciate you. it. We'll be back next week to talk Sister Wives, Mom Talk, and Plathville. Until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.